Great, that's so that's so nice nice that you created that 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 uh, that exercise. Cool. What else? What else? What else did I want to talk about? I already said this. This, this the main thing I wanted to say that the hand is a mini body. This the functionality. And it's, uh, <coughs> this, um, and, but it's recognizing the amazing complexity of a piano key. Because I think this thing is just pressing it down. It doesn't recognize how complex we are, but it also doesn't recognize how complex that thing is. And how, as soon as it can't move, like this key here, I don't know if you can see, but I pressed it down, and then I let it come up about a tenth of a millimeter. It's, it's actually not at the bottom. Here's the bottom, and I'm already off the bottom about a tenth of a millimeter or a fifth of a millimeter. That means at no point did it lose its ability to be a lever. Look, it can still move. It can still move. It can still move. It can still move. As long as it can still move, my finger can still move. So they're both still levers. So now, I'm pressing it. I jammed it. It can't move anymore. It's not a lever anymore. And neither am I. Because I can feel it all the way up into my body, all the way up there. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And now I relax to get unstuck. And now I'm out of balance. And then I do it again. And then I get that. And then I go through the whole cycle again. And I never get to that magic place where I'm in a functional relationship with a moving lever key. So, yes, play with weight, but be fully aware of the implications of your weight. Your weight, <clears throat> the weight of your body is mostly muscles which are wrapped around bones. And if you let the bones do the work, then that weight can guide you in free, educated, sensitive, functional movement. And when the weight is just a weight with no bones inside, then it falls in and you're stuck. Then you've got to get unstuck. So, you know, I've seen many and heard many great pianists play with what they call weight technique, and you see all you know, the down movements sometimes, but they recalibrate and they reset instantaneously, and they do it so well that they never get to that stuck point that I just described. And then us mere mortals, <laughs> we mere mortals, you know, the other two billion pianists on the planet who do not play as well as the, that 20 or so, or that 40 or so, or that <coughs> really figured it out. Then we hear, oh, use the weight, and bam, and then we're, we're lost. And then, so we spend our time trying to get out of the hole we just dug for ourselves. So weight is a burden, mass is a tool. So if you are a weight, then you're, you're muscles, but if you are a mass, then you are bones wrapped in muscles, and the bones move, the bones become functional. It's strange, a lot of this is semantics. I keep, every time I speak to a group, I try to, I always wing it, I never do a prepared text, and I try to come up with uh, new formulations, because you never know what formulation is going to, ah, bing, the light bulb went on. The other day, it just happened uh, in a lesson, um, you know, we're doing all this stuff and how to walk and all the stuff we've been talking about today and, and, then, and you know, so there's this way of walking where look, I take a step, I take a step, I take a step, I take a step but you see the, see the knee is bending and unbending and the knees are bending and unbending and then, it's, and then you look, I'm, I'm exaggerating it a little bit but it's almost as if I'm not walking at all it's almost as if there's a wheel down there, and that wheel is just rolling. And it's just like, the wheel is rolling, the wheel is rolling. And like, my feet are on the rim of a wheel, and it's just going round and round. And if the rim of that wheel is really round, then there will be no bumps, and it's just smooth sailing. And I said to the lady who was in the lesson on the line, it's just like a wheel, and you're, like, your fingers are just like... And she just... It just, that was the image that worked for her. But, so it's just, it's just as if there's a wheel rolling on the keys, and, and, if, and if that wheel rim 
doesn't have any deformations in it. If it's really just round, the thing just goes. And she just took off. She, she, just, like, she just started playing like fast scale. It was, it was great. So that worked for her. That worked for her. Because that, it's a nice image and it doesn't get into all the nuts and bolts, all the, how the finger stands up different from the way the thumb stands up and how the arm has to come over here for the thumb and, and does the thumb go one over or does the hand go under or whatever, you know. Thumb under hand over, I mean, no, just, it's a wheel. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. sure, why does he do all this bullshit to <laughs> say it's a wheel? It's like, <coughs> save us all a lot of trouble. <laughs> Great. So, let's do a little ATPN. Sit in your chair. Notice, by the way, <laughs> if you were sitting with your back leaning against the back of the chair, and then you came out here, so that you're now sitting on your six bones, are you more alert or less alert or the same? Uh, yeah, but don't just say it. Oh, he wants me to say I'm more alert. Yeah. But do you really feel it? Do you feel it? You go back here and something goes into a sort of soporific kind of You come up here and. It's very interesting because many people, uh, uh, they're uncertain. There's some concert pianists who now play by leaning against the back against the chair back to play. And because you see, that relaxes them. But what that, the, the, the erect body, the, the body vertical in the field of gravity is a very complex uh, interplay between the extensors and the flexors. So you're extending, you're extending, you're, your back is going like this to get you higher, but not too much because it's not strained. And then you, you do a little too much, so then you, you let the flexors <coughs> flex you a little bit more, you let those extensors go a little more, and you come back here. So if you're doing that now, just following me, then you were a little bit back on your sits bones. And so, now again, if you went forward on your sits bones, you would just fall over unless the back responded by, oh, oh, oh. All those back muscles are engaged, but they're not over-engaged. Now, oh, let those back muscles, let them be a little longer. And you rock back, and you get a little rounder. And you go forward and you get a little bit more open. But you see, yeah, very nicely. If you don't force it, and you don't try to sit up straighter as you're rocking forward, and you don't try to slump as you're rocking backward, but you just feel, hmm, wait a minute, my pelvis, when I rock back a little bit, my pelvis gives my spine a different message. My pelvis is supporting the spine differently here. Oh, I rock forward. Oh, the pelvis is giving my spine a different message. Oh, oh, geez, if I really feel it, I straighten up naturally, but in another part of my spine from the one I thought. And then I, I rock back, then I, I might not get so rounded. I might stay straight even when I'm more relaxed. And then, so you just go forward and back like this, forward and back, but feeling how this basic relationship of the sits bones of the bench can inform the whole sense of how I'm, how I am vertical. How I am actually in a state of unstable equilibrium. And then you realize, holy shit, I've been sitting all my life and not really getting there. State of unstable equilibrium. So the state of unstable, I don't have a pencil. The state of unstable equilibrium it actually doesn't exist. It's like a, a, a point. You know, in geometry, you have three dimensions, two dimensions, or a one dimensional point. The one-dimensional point does not exist. Mm -hmm. It's a theoretical thing. So the same, because it's too small. <laughs> and the same with unstable equilibrium. Actually, there's no way that spoon could ever find the balance where it would just stay. But, and so it's the same with the human body, but we can approach it. And the closer we get to it, the freer we are, and then the farther away we get to it, the more we're held and clenched and slumped or, you know, you know stand up, stand up, straighten up, sit up straight. <coughs> the parental, the parental in, uh, imperative, yeah. So, 
Put your hands on your thighs. Notice if you just, wherever your hands were, and then you put them on your thighs, does the, do the sit bones change? Did you, did you go further back on your sit bones when you put your hands on your thighs? Did you go further forward when you would put your hands on your thighs? Did they just stay exactly where they were, the sit bones? Yeah. So, whatever it is, you'll, that's your habit. And now, so now this time, put your hands on the thighs and slide them forward by rocking the pelvis forward. And slide them back by rocking the pelvis back. And feel how that is. And feel whether, if you do it five times, was it the same every time? Or did each time feel different? Because it's, my, 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 my senses are realizing, my God, my left hip joint was a little tense and it could let go. Oh, my right hip joint I, tries too hard when I'm rocking forward. I don't have to do that. And, Oh, my spine straightened up too much. Why did I do that? And feel, feel, feel. Change. Go a little bit more with one hand or a little bit more with the other hand. So that you introduce a rotation and then slide forward one hand the other hand. And do all sorts of little variations. But basically, the hands are passive, but they're getting a lovely massage. The palm, the actual sensory enrichment of the palm and the underside of the fingers, snug on the legs, rubbing the legs, but not any effort or hardly any effort in the hand and the arms. Most of the effort coming from the body. The body initiates and the hands just slide. Okay? So come back. Uh, You're still leaning against the chair, man. It's been a long day. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't torture me like that. Okay, now, slide the hands forward, but this time, if the body rocks back while the hands are sliding forward, then it's more as if, like, the hands did the initiation, and the hands kind of pushed the body backwards. Now the hands are going to slide back, but they're going to pull the body forward. So you see the, 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 the perception of the who's active and who's passive here. It got totally switched around. So when this is the differentiated one, the hands and the body are going opposite for each other. And in this one, the hands are the initiator. See how this relates to our lesson? Yeah. So this, this is a nice way of reminding the nervous system of what went on in Nicolaus's lesson, for instance, to some degree the others as well, before you actually go to the piano, you set it up so the body always and already recognizes those things we did at the piano. Okay. Now take a break, let your hands lie in whatever. You would do better if your heels were underneath your knees. That's right. Uh, yeah, this is piano. Yeah, lean back. Fuck you, Alan Fraser. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, hands on the thighs again. Pick a finger. I'm going to do my third, but now we're going to. Now I don't know how. We're, how should we do this? Uh, rock forward on your pelvis so that the forearms rise, but now instead of sliding, that thing that we did with, with uh, Thomas. Christian Nicholas Thomas. Yeah, I'm, I'm dyslexic, don't worry. So the thing we did with Thomas, we're going to do it all, all together. And you just imagine, it's the note of G. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sing the note G. You, you me. Okay, you, sing the note G. The G? Yeah, sing a G. G. <laughs> that was wow. pretty close. <laughs> that was E. <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering, I always thought, like, who's got perfect pitch for that? It's always a fun game. So. I am playing the piano with my sits bones.
happens. <laughs> because you do this, remember we slid forward and we rocked the pelvis. The hands were just passive, they just slid forward because the pelvis did something. And now that finger's going to stand up because the pelvis did something and it freed the arm and it freed the hand and it freed everything. And there's so many ways of doing it. It's so interesting because each of you, nobody's doing it the same as the others. Everybody's got their own style. Some people go straight up like this with a straight finger. Other people will curl the finger, but basically kind of keep it curved. Other people will come like this and then the, the knuckle collapses or something, or this knuckle collapses and that one doesn't. So feel how you do that and feel, hmm, could the... Pelvis helps so much, and that standing action is so gentle that the curves of the three joints, they just kind of stay relatively similar. Yeah. And there's not one that's flatter than the other, or not one that's more curled than the other, but just kind of like that. Look, when you stand up, your hands hang by your sides. This is the natural shape of the finger, right? Now, if I, if I go like this, the finger's more sort of flexed. If I go like that, it's less flexed. But if my arm is hanging, it's like this, right? So do some, don't do anything with your finger. Don't the hand and finger is still totally passive, but you do something with your pelvis so that the finger gets to that. You see, you're curling. So you're doing, and the heel of the hand is staying on the knee. That's because I had you doing this all the time, with the sliding the hand. But here I want the, the heel of the hand to float up into the air. The heel of the hand to float up into the air. Yeah, there. And then and now, now you just stay there and balance and you do a little bit this way, a little bit that way. Oh my God, I am in unstable equilibrium, my torso, and my hand, my finger is in unstable equilibrium. And you could even do a little bit left and a little bit right. And you could do little circles, and the, the finger is barely touching. Yeah, and now because there's no stress on the finger, it's almost floating off into space, but it's still just touching like a rope. All the joints of the finger are feeling what they can do without the normal muscular effort, which is kind of clouding your perception. No, all the effort, the movement is emanating from the sitz bones, the sitz bones. The sits bones. The sits bones. Yeah, and you could even switch the fingers. Oh my god. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. This is hypnotism. Like, if Ken Hall could see us now, he would laugh his head off. <laughs> so he, Alan, you are such a charlatan. You think you're teaching these people something about playing the piano. <laughs> <laughs> We have lots of arguments about it. <laughs> but this really, you're, he plays very well and he's very sensitive to all the aspects of his inner process and the relaxation of the inner cosmos. So he actually does this. So he would like, you know, come on, Camel, you actually already do this really well. So give us a break. Give us a chance to even approach a little bit that kind of mastery. Because when you sense your skeleton, you can move well. Take a break. Mm -hmm. Your heels. Yeah. It's okay, great. look, put your feet on your knees. <laughs> it's lean back. It's lean back. <laughs> yeah, I know, but lean back, take a break, take a break with you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Fine. At least I got her to put one heel on the one knee. <laughs> <laughs> you chairs are just too low for me. It's oh, the chair's too low? <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, crap. Do you want this? No, no, no. I'm fine. I'm no, fine. really. I, if you want this, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Or more cushions or something? There's Look, there's big cushions here. You could even... Yeah? Raise the height that way. Okay. Now. <laughs> Next, look at that. Yeah, great. Uh, now, please uh, make uh, your hands into a bird beak. So there's many different bird beaks you can make. You got all five fingers like this, or you could do one, two, three, 
like this, with the look four, four, and five like really curled back. You could do one, two, with three, four, and five curled back. So I don't know. There's many different ones. You find one that you like. I like, today I like one, two for some reason. No, I'd like one, three. One, three. I don't know. Okay, today I like one, one two, three, four, five. But whatever you like, a bird beak. So the, the thing about the bird beak is it's very stiff. Yeah, it's very stiff. And then you put the bird beak on the thigh, yeah, but your hand is not stiff enough. You, do that bird beak and now make these stiffer. If you're gonna, if you're gonna do that, then get these two way back here. Yeah, like that, come on. Mm. This is the same link like in the lesson four and five, right back, like Horvitz. Like Horvitz, yeah? Okay. Okay, and now press these bird beaks into the thigh a little bit. That's right. And now, and now really you have four sits bones. There's the one, two, three, four. Yeah? And you you use the bird beaks to push your pelvis back and pull your pelvis forward. And push your pelvis back and pull the pelvis forward, and you get skeletal connection all the way through. Do it slower, I'm going too fast because I'm getting excited. <laughs> Don't take me the wrong way. It's a problem in French because je suis excité has a very specific connotation, <laughs> which has nothing to do with playing the piano. <laughs> okay, now, uh, so, so now we were pushing and pulling, so that's differentiated. Now, use the sit bones to let the whole bird beak thing go forward. So here the wrist does come up, and now the sit bones are pulling the wrists back and down. So the, the, the pelvis is moving the wrist forward and like that, and rolling it forward and letting it lie down. Can you actually lie all the way down? That's it, get the heel of the hand right down. So rock forward, da 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 da, that's right. What's, does it, is this useful for anybody? <laughs> like, imagine you're playing the piano. But you have this kind of movement available to you as you're playing the piano. You want to play a chord, you go like this. You want to play a chord, you go like this. You could even go sideways and sideways. But all the time, the high tonus bird beak. This one, or this one, or this one. Yeah. So I now do little circles, and so the pelvis is doing circles, and the two hand bird beaks are doing circles. Of course, let the knees go too. Don't do anything stiff. Reverse the direction of this. So this is giving your neuromotor system information. This is how all the parts of the skeleton conspire to fold and unfold together when they are clearly connected, because the bird beak increases the tonus so that the connections get clearer. Uh, take a break. There's a, there's a, a Feldenkrais lesson where you called the Errol Flynn lesson, where you lie on your back with your arms at shoulder height, and you roll the arms on the floor like this. And he teaches that lesson with the...